Welcome to our third lecture, which is Business Combination for SMEs. So, for the overview, we'll discuss ano ba yung PFRS for SMEs and of course, define as well ano ba yung mga SME. Paano ka matatawag na SME sa Pilipinas? And also, we'll discuss ano yung difference ng PFRS for SMEs for business combination versus the full PFRS or PFRS 3. And finally, paano mo siya i-direct? Okay, small and medium-sized entities as defined by the Philippine SEC in 2009. First, binanggit niya yung quantitative threshold. Matatawag ka daw na SME sa Pilipinas kapag yung asset mo is between 3 to 350 million or your liabilities is between 3 to 250 million. So, ito yung 3 to 350, 3 to 250 rule. Okay. Pero in addition to the quantitative threshold, dapat ma-meet mo din daw itong mga susunod na criteria. Hindi lang based kung gaano kakalaki. Pero dapat ito ma-meet mo din. First, you're not in the process of issuing instruments in a public market. And hindi ka pa nakakapag-issue ng instruments na yon sa public market. Halimbawa, hindi ka pa nag issue or hindi ka in the process of issuing ng equity securities like in a stock exchange or bonds in a debt, debt security market. And you're not a holder of a secondary license issued by a regulatory agency. So, sino-sino ba yung mga holders ng secondary license? Uh, example, securities broker, dealer, stocks exchange, investment houses, financing companies, lending companies, etc. So, what's uh, common between these holders of secondary license is that they are managing someone else's money or finances or investment. So, since you're in a trust position, di ba? Nagmamanage ka ng pagmamayari ng iba. So, it's a trust position. Therefore, dapat na mas stringent yung reporting mo. Hindi pwedeng yung simplified na PFRS for SMEs. So, you are required to report under the full PFRS. It's the same reason why the next one, your, uh, public utility is also excluded for PFRS for SME reporting. So, sil, ito yung mga, mga hindi pwede. So, kapag hin, hindi ka... Second bullet, third, fourth, and fifth bullet. So, pwede kang mag-adapt ng PFRS for SME. Okay. So, kung kanina, sinabi natin yung mandated or dinify natin yung mandated na mag-adapt ng PFRS for SME. Ito naman yung, based on your discretion, is pwede kang uh, hindi mag-adapt ng PFRS for SME. Meaning, Pag nandito ka, pwede kang mag-full PFRS. So, sino-sino sila? First, kapag part ka ng group reporting under full PFRS, whether you're a subsidiary, parent, joint venture, associate, or branch office. The reason why, kasi isang premise, di ba, ng group reporting natin or consolidation is dapat bawat isa dun sa miyembro ng grupo mo, you are applying a uniform accounting policy. And when you say uniform accounting policy, kung IFRS adapting ka, dapat lahat dun sa group mo, IFRS or PFRS adapting. Since, uh, halimbawa, yung subsidiary mo qualified as an SME, tas sa group reporting, hindi kayo qualified as an SME, so dapat kayong mag-full PFRS. Si subsidiary mo, kahit SME siya, pwede siya mag-nominate na mag full PFRS na para hindi na de-double yung reporting. Next, you're a subsidiary of a foreign parent moving towards IFRS. Yung kanina, already reporting. Ito naman, moving towards IFRS. Or, you're projected to breach the quantitative threshold. Yung 3 to 350 and 3 to 250 rule, Iniisip mo, ay, lalagpas ng 250 million yung liabilities ko. Or lalagpas ng 350 million yung assets ko. So, iniisip mo in the near future, which is in a, within a 12-month period, iniisip mo na hindi ka na magiging SME. So, pwede ka nang mag-adapt ng full PFRS. Basta yung projection mo na yon will be sustained on a long-term basis. Then, Last, you plan to conduct an initial public offering within two years. So, may plano kang mag-list ng shares mo within two years. 
Ano ba yung difference ni full PFRS versus the PFRS for SMEs? Isa-isahin natin. In terms of the terminology used on the met method of accounting, ang sabi natin sa full PFRS or PFRS 3, acquisition method. Sa PFRS for SME, ang tawag niya purchase method. Sa pag-compute ng acquisition cost or cost of investment or consideration transferred, ang tawag ang computation mo for full PFRS, acquisition cost, yung binayad mo, plus the contingent consideration. For PFRS, for SMEs, ganun din naman. Ang pinagkaiba lang, dinagdag mo si direct cost. So, if you remember, basta acquisition-related cost, whether direct or indirect, kapag full PFRS ka, expense palagi. Diba? Basta acquisition cost, whether direct or indirect, expense palagi pag PFRS 3. Pero kapag PFRS for SME, yung indirect cost, yes, in expense pa rin. Pero kapag direct cost, sinasama mo siya as part of consideration transfer. So, kinakapitalize mo siya as part of the cost of investment. For the goodwill, kapag yung adjustment mo, lagpas na ng one year na measurement period, hindi mo ina-adjust sa goodwill, di ba, kapag full PFRS. Pero pag PFRS for SMEs, pwede mo siyang i-adjust pag goodwill. Hindi pala pwede, dapat. Dapat mo siyang i-adjust pag goodwill. Then next, for the intangibles. I-recognize mo siya under PFRS 3 kapag contracted or separable. Kapag PFRS for SMEs, yung term na ginamit, its fair value can be measured reliably daw. Contingent liabilities is recognized under PFRS 3 kapag present obligation and fair value can be measured reliably. Pero kay SME, ang criteria lang na nilagay niya, its fair value can be measured reliably. It's kind of parang term, terminologies. Mas pinasimplify niya lang for PFRS for SME. For the goodwill computation, under PFRS 3, ang computation natin, consideration transfer plus non-controlling interest plus previously held equity interest minus the fair value of the net assets acquired. Kay PFRS for SME, straightforward. Consideration transferred minus the proportionate share in the fair value of the net assets acquired. So, kung 80% yun, so, fair value of net assets acquired times 80%, ganun siya. Okay, for the goodwill computation, under the full PFRS, si goodwill hindi siya inaamortize but tested for impairment at least annually. For PFRS for SMEs, it is amortized over its useful life and which is presumed to be 10 years. Dapat daw hindi ka lalagpas ng 10 years. So, kapag silent si problem for PFRS for SMEs, ha, i-amortize mo si Goodwill over 10 years. So, ang entry mo doon, debit, uh, debit amortization expense, credit accumulated amortization for Goodwill. Okay, for the measurement of non-controlling interest, you have an option as an accounting policy choice under PFRS 3 na pwedeng fair value or proportionate share. Pero pagdating mo ng, ng PFRS for SMEs, ni-remove yung choice. Ang pwede mo lang gamitin is proportionate share. Hindi ka pwedeng mag-fair value pag PFRS for SMEs. Masimple. Okay. Let's try. So, tayo ha. Uh, itong scenario na to is stock acquisition. So, your problem, P, uh, P Company and SME issued 120,000 shares of 25 par value for 90% of S Company. P Company shares were selling 40 pesos. The fair value of S net assets was 4 million. Out of pocket costs are as follows, legal fees, printing costs for stock certification, finder's fee, audit fees for business combination. A contingent con consideration amounts to 18,200. Question, magkano yung cost ng investment ni S Company, which is an SME? Uh, sa books ni P Company pala, okay. And then, magkano yung non-controlling interest in the consolidated financial statements? Finally, lastly, magkano yung goodwill or gain on bargain purchase. Let's compute. First, magkano yung cost ng investment mo? Sabi natin, ang pinagkaiba lang niya for versus the full PFRS is 
sorry, dinadagdag mo yung direct cost. So, ano lang ba yung direct cost dito? Itong legal fees, finder's fees, sa si PA audit fees, okay? Ano pinakaiba ng direct sa kaya indirect cost ng acquisition-related cost? Kapag direct cost, hindi mo siya mai-incur kung hindi ka nag-business combination. Pag indirect cost, related pa rin siya dun sa business combination, pero actually kahit natuloy or hindi yung business combination mo, may incur mo siya. Parang ganun. Okay. So, how to solve for the cost of investment? Balik tayo sa problem. Ilan ba yung shares na inisyo? 120. Magkano per share? 40. So, magkano yung fair value ng issued shares? 4.8 million. Plus, the direct cost, which is legal fees, finder's fee, saka CPA audit fees. 58,000. Conting plus contingent consideration at its fair value of 18,200. Your cost of investment is 4,876,200. Entry sa parent or P company, debit investment, 4,876,200. Credit common shares at par value which is 25 pesos times the number of shares issued, 120,000 pesos. I sorry, 120,000 shares equals 3 million. Credit share premium for the difference of the fair value na 40 pesos and 25 peso par value. So that will be 4.8 million fair value less 3 million par value less the share issuance cost, yung printing cost for stock certification, that's share issuance cost, 9,400. That will be 1,790,600. Credit cash, magkano ba yung binayad mo for the acquisition related cost and the share issuance cost? 67,400. And then credit your contingent consideration, a liability for the contingent consideration, which is 18,200. That's it. What if naman, okay. Now, we'll compute naman the non-controlling interest. So, paano mo siya i-compute nga? Dapat proportionate share lang. Hindi ka allowed under PFRS for SME to compute NCI at fair value. Dapat proportionate share. Let's compute. Fair value of net assets acquired, 4 million times 10% non-controlling interest. Kasi 90% yung binili mo. So, 90% yung controlling interest. Your non-controlling interest is 10%. Then, your NCI at proportionate share is 400,000. That's simple. And then number three, how much is your goodwill or gain on bargain purchase computed as the cost of investment? Yung kinompute natin kanina, 4,876,200 minus the proportionate share in the fair value of the net assets acquired, which is 4 million times 90%. That will be 3.6 million. Your goodwill is 1,276,200. So, straightforward yung computation mo. Kapag uh, SME. Your journal entry for the console, again, stock acquisition to ha. So, ang assumption mo doon, ang binili mo doon, shares of stocks, not the net asset. Pag magkoconso ka na, yung net asset ni S Company, i-recognize mo at its fair value kay Conso. That will be debit kung ano-ano yung mga assets niya. Halimbawa, cash, receivables, inventories. Kung binigay yung breakdown, eti debit cash, debit receivable, debit inventory. Pero hindi nabigay yung breakdown dito, so debit na lang natin net assets, 4 million. Debit the computed goodwill sa taas, 2 million uh, sorry, 1,276,200. And then, credit your non-controlling interest in a-compute natin kanina at proportionate share, 400,000. Credit your investment, which is yung acquisition cost mo kanina, 4,876,200. Next, what if asset acquisition? Yung kanina kasi ay stock acquisition. Ito ang binili mo asset. It can be through merger or consolidation. So, dito, you issued 120,000 shares for all the net assets. Kasi kapag asset acquisition, di naman pwedeng 50% or 80% lang ng asset yung bibilhin mo. Diba? Buong net assets yung bibilhin mo. So, binili mo yung net assets, 120,000 shares, 25 uh, peso per value. Same pa rin yung given. 
The question now is magkano yung consideration transferred and magkano yung goodwill or gain on bargain purchase. Let's compute for the consideration transferred. Number of shares issued, 120 times fair value, 40. Fair value of issued shares, 4.8. Plus direct cost, 58,000. Contingent consideration, 18,200. Cost of investment, same lang nung kanina, 4,876,200. Pero pag magko-compute ka ng goodwill, wala ka ng shares, di mo na siya tinayim sa 90% kasi binili mo lahat ng net assets. So, last 4 million net assets, your goodwill is 876,200. Okay. Okay, so, so yung computed mo, your, your goodwill is 876,200. Ano yung entries mo to record the asset acquisition? So, debit net assets. For the assets acquired at fair value, 4 million. Debit goodwill, 876,200. Credit common shares ko at par value. Credit share premium as the excess of par value minus the uh, share issuance cost na 9,400. Credit cash, magkano yung binayaran mong acquisition-related cost, and then credit the liability. Okay? Ang pinagkaiba nito, pag asset acquisition, wala kang NCI. Okay? So, that's it for business combination for SMC. So, if there's question, just let, let me know. Thank you!